Welcome to part two of the candy simulation tutorial I've been doing. So if you haven't already seen part one where we did the modeling and the simulation and setting up the scene, you can go check that out on my channel. But this is part two where we're gonna be doing the lighting, the materials, I'm gonna show you how to render this out as a final animation. This is beginner friendly. I'm going through every step of the process and I am making the blend files available on my Patreon as well. So um, let's get started with part two. I hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so now that we're in part two of this tutorial, we're gonna add our lights. So we're gonna go Shift A and let's go to our light options and let's add in a simple area light. We're then gonna bring that area light above our candy jar here. And let's just go over to our light settings and let's make the strength 150. And by the way, 150 is my value of choice. You can you know, make the strength and the value, whatever you feel is adequate for your scene. The scale of your scene as well will influence um, how much your light has an effect of things. So just keep that in mind. If you weren't working at the same scale as I was, um, these values could vary a little bit. So 150 is what I'm choosing. And I'm gonna go to the size and make that three meters. So now if we go over to our render settings here and we go to our render engine, I'm gonna be working in cycles, but if you wanna work with EV for whatever reason, maybe you don't have a very powerful computer, you can stick to that. So I'm just gonna go with cycles. And if you have a GPU, definitely enable it. If you don't, don't worry too much about it. Just while we're quickly at it, under the sampling, we're also just gonna make the denoising here um, under the render and make that optics. That'll give you a really good result. Make sure to save as you go. And now if we hit Z and we go rendered, we can see this is what we have. So I'm gonna to go to my camera view and here's a little tip. If you go into your camera view and you're in render mode, if you hit control B or command B, you can click and drag over your camera and it'll limit the rendering to the camera um, view, view space here. So it's not rendering everywhere and it just kind of cleans up things a little bit and gives you a bit better performance. So I'm just gonna move this light up a little bit and then I'm gonna go shift D to duplicate it. I'm gonna move it over, rotate it in and then shift D to duplicate it, move another one over and then rotate it in. So what we've got is just these three lights and maybe one more duplication from the back. So if we go into camera view, we should see this. It's nice and well lit. And we can mess around for lights a little bit later, but now we have our scene lit. We're gonna go over to our shading workspace. Make sure to go back into camera and please do go into your rendered mode by hitting Z and going rendered. If you feel like your computer struggles a little bit, you don't have to have it in the, the live render. You can always just go to solid, but I prefer to have rendered enabled while I'm doing my materials. So I'm gonna select my background and I'm just gonna click new. And for me, I'm gonna go with a nice kind of violet, lavender, kind of purpley color. I don't want it too saturated and I want the value to be to the higher end here. I don't want it too dark in the value. With that done, we're simply gonna select our jar, click new, and let's just come and get rid of this principal shader. Delete it by hitting X. Shift A over here in the node space and let's just um, search and let's just type in glass. Let's get ourselves a glass BSDF and plug it into the surface here. We're also gonna click on a color here and let's just up that value. Make sure the value is all the way to the top and we don't wanna add any kind of color or saturation to this. Um, let's come to the roughness and make it 0.05 because we don't want the glass to be perfectly reflective. We do want a little bit of roughness. Now we can select the lid jar, come to our drop down, and get that glass material. In fact, while we're at it, let's just call that glass, just so we're a little bit organized. Select the background where we added that purple material to, and let's just call that um, BG for background, or in this case, I really should say floor. And let's now select the rim on here, this little cylinder or torus thing we added in part one. Let's click new and let's just make that metallic. Give it a bit of a yellowish gold almost and bring that roughness down a tad bit. And now we can just call that gold. Okay, cool. So now pretty much we have our jar, we have a background, we have a lighting, a floor, I should say. Now let's work on the candies here. So let's quickly select the jar and just um, hide the lid here. I'm gonna select one of the candies and the candy material is super simple. We're gonna use a texture. So we're gonna go Shift A, search, and let's just type in wave and get a wave texture. And let's go to edit, preferences, go to add-ons and come here to the add-ons and type in node and come here and enable node wrangler, which you can see I already have enabled. If you have node wrangler enabled, 
you can select your wave texture and then you can hit Control T or Command T. And it's gonna add in a mapping node and a texture coordinate. We simply wanna take our object from the texture coordinate, plug it into the vector of the mapping. And now our wave texture knows how we wanna distribute the texture across the surface of the candies. In this case, we're using the object method here for the vector. We're gonna take the color and plug it into the base of the principle. And in between there, we wanna put something. So we're gonna go Shift A, simply click on search. And let's type in color. And let's get ourselves a color ramp and place it in between the wave and the principle. We're then gonna drag the value slider down from our right. And let's grab, click on the color here, and I'm gonna make it kind of like an orangey, unsaturated color. I'm gonna drag the black value up. And we're gonna make that a nice saturated yellow. Not too saturated. We're then gonna to come to the roughness value and bring it down a bit. Then we're gonna come here to the scale and we're gonna make it two under the wave. And now if we hit Z and we go rendered, we can see our candies have this nice material and you can mess around with this roughness all you want. By all means, work more on these materials, add some imperfections, some scratches, some nicks, some chips, but this is just what I'm doing for this tutorial. So now we got our materials, we got some nice lighting, we got cycles all set up. So let's quickly make sure this looks good by giving it a render. So once again, just under our render settings, we did enable under the um, denoising, the optics um, denoiser. So now let's go render, render image, and let's see what that looks like. And here we have the final result. We have a nice render and we have our animation. We have everything in place. Now I'm gonna show you how you can render this out as a final animation. Now for me, I didn't actually render this out as a final animation just because it's um, gonna take a little bit even on my computer. But if you wanted to render it out as a final animation in cycles, what you can do is you can go over to your output settings. You're gonna to go to this folder under output and click on it. You're gonna select somewhere on your computer, it can be anywhere. That's the file path where your video or your image sequences, whatever you choose, are gonna be exported to. We now wanna come over to our file format. Now, you can choose M um, PNG, and what, when that's all done rendering out to that file you selected, you can composite that together in something like After Effects or whatever program you prefer. But for me, I'm just gonna make this FFmpeg video. So it's a video format, and under the encoding, you can select your container type. So for me, the container type is always an MP4, so I ch choose M MPEG4 over there. Make sure to save. So now that we have our file format selected, our destination, all we have to do is go to render and render animation, and it'll render that out to you. It might take an hour, two hours, really depends on your system. For me, I'm running a GTX 750, which is um, quite primitive, but it does it would get the job done in probably about an hour and a half if I rendered this out. Um, once again, if you wanted to uh, maybe sacrifice on some of the quality, you can always change it to EV, which doesn't really re render refractive materials very well, but you could do that um, to speed up things, but I'm just gonna leave it at cycles. So that has been how I did this. So let's just go back to our layout and um, hit Alt H just to unhide that lid. Go to frame one, just play a little animation again. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys actually enjoyed this. I will be putting this blend file on my Patreon, which you can check in the description below. And I really do support, um, appreciate all the support, like subscribers and even people who like. So um, all of those things mean just as much to me as Patreon support, and it really helps me to keep the channel going. I hope you guys stay safe and that you have a good week. And I'll see you guys next time for another Blender tutorial.